Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Johanna. For those of you who are new here, welcome. For those of you who are returning, welcome back. In today's video, I'll be doing a flip through of Music Rendezvous by Funo Yanagawa. And if that is of interest to you, please stay tuned. Okay, so because I did purchase this from Amazon Japan, I'll put a link in the description box below. It is not an affiliate link. I don't have an affiliate with Amazon Japan, uh, but it was something that was recommended to me. So I don't know how easy it would be to find on there. Uh, this is one of three. I will be actually uh, filming all of the flip throughs separately and hopefully uh, uploading them on my channel back to back just so that if you are interested in purchasing maybe one or two of them then you can see what all these coloring books entail and so there is some sort of music theme on here it is all in japanese so i couldn't tell you what any of this says of course i could use google translate but for the most part i don't feel a need for that. Now, there are some things that I do want to look up sometimes because I want to color them realistically, but more often than not, um, I will just color it in any kind of color fashion that I like. Now, uh, the thing I like about the three different Funo Yanagawa coloring books that I have is uh, she does visit places that I haven't seen represented in other coloring books that I have. And so I just I really like that. And the art style, because this is just little thumbnails, the art style, I think, is... It gives me sort of a combination of Rita Berman vibes. It gives me some Angela Porter vibes. It even gives me some uh, eerie vibes, and I just, I really like it. The paper is thinner. It isn't as heavy cardstock as, let's say, an eerie book is. And so I definitely will have to see how water mediums work on here. But I think pencils would work. Um, it's not super smooth. Um, so I, I will also need to test the different pencils that I have. I haven't worked in any of these yet. I did want to do um, a flip through with you guys. I just think it's very interesting the way the artist pictures kind of flow. Like this one right here, I think would be stunning with just one color. There's a little bit of glitter gel pen accent on here and then just really leaning into the black and white aspect of it. I think it's just beautiful. But we start off in Spain and it does have some of the towns in Spain by way of Madrid, Barcelona, Valencia, Sevilla, and Granada. And so the next few pages will be from various aspects in Spain. Spain does have a tapas bar culture where um, I believe you go from bar to bar to bar. Each bar has little tapas, which is little small plates of appetizers. And so you eat appetizers, you drink a little, and then you go to the next one. At least that's what I've seen on Food Network. And that way, uh, each of the little bars have specialty things that you won't find at other bars uh, but you also are getting a little bit of food a little bit of alcohol but it's also very social culture and then you've got the flamenco dancers and the art style to me it's very simplistic and yet you can see here all of the detail and there's just there's movement so these two pages can be colored singly but they also can be colored as a two-page spread because of how the movement is and the use of black on the coloring pages i think is phenomenal and so far there has been a cat on every single page so we're going to have to see if there's a cat in every okay okay I'm, I'm thinking Funo Yanagawa has a thing for cats. This one right here I had mentioned when I did my haul video is I think this would look really great in oranges or reds or um, oranges and blues. I'd probably want to look up some tile work from Spain and then color it sort of reminiscent of that. But again, there's movement on here. It's not necessarily a mandala one because it's not in a circle, but these two sides are not the same pictures and yet there is some symmetry to it because of the shape. I, I think it's just fantastic. Uh, I love the little vignettes but I also love that they are still tied together because um, 
they could have just left these standalone, not given the little border, and that would be more reminiscent of like Joanna Basford or Rita Berman. But these seem integrated into one house. I can see this as a dollhouse. Okay. I think it's just, it's beautiful. You've got a bathtub, a lounge, a bedroom, and a kitchen. It's, it's, it's actually gorgeous work. We've got the last page for Spain here which includes some bullfighting and we've got a cat and we've got a cat and then we go in to Greece again very stylized and yet very beautiful and for some of these actually let's be honest for all of these I don't know that I necessarily would feel the need to add a background um, because there is so much black on the page I think I'd like to keep some white on the page as well and then just bring some color to the page whether bold and vibrant or very subtle I think either way would look phenomenal. And now we're going into various things from Greece. I think the owl is here because Athena, uh, one of her uh, animals that's associated with her was the owl. We've got a cat there. Oh, and we've got a cat there. And this is one of the seaside towns. So this, I probably do some very vibrant blues for the water some kind of sagey green um, a wash of blue for the sky but keep a lot of the buildings white because i think those towns where there are buildings on the cliff sides facing the mediterranean um, are all done in in white and then just bring some color here maybe in some blues just to kind of tie this in and then you can do a fun border whether it's in blues blue and white is the greek flag colors or whether you do this vibrant i mean this sky would be up to you. Cat, cat. And I don't, I, I think Aphrodite is the goddess of love, but I don't know if that's the Greek or if that's the Roman, because the Romans did base their gods off the Grecian ones. But either way, absolutely beautiful page. And I noticed this on another page where there's kind of these uh, gray starbursts, but if you used like a something like this, a mild liner, but in a yellow fluorescent, I think that would look very stunning against the gray because then it would just glow or like a glitter gel pen as well. Oh, and there's the cat. We've got a cat butt right there. And we've got a cat on a camel. <laughs> and that's fun and then we go into morocco oh and there's all cats right there that makes it fun that, that's the kind of find uh or search and find color aspect that i enjoy not like those random obnoxious ones in the mythographic ones this makes sense there's a cat on every page oh <laughs> i I, I cannot stress enough. I love the movement of these pages. I mean, it's a two-dimensional page, and yet you can feel the flow of it, but you can also feel the joy and the dancing of the belly dancers and the donkeys and the camels. Even the snake is dancing over here. You've got that cat right there. And then you've got that cat right there. But there are all our other cats on the page. And it just makes it really interesting. This I can see in some blues and some oranges and some yellow. And I think it would just be absolutely stunning. Again, more pictures from Morocco. And I love the sort of mandala aspect of it. And yet not because they are not symmetrical. You've got your cat here and your cat here. I love the day and night of this. And so you could do opposite colors on the color wheel. I think Sarah has a do opposites attract or something like that hashtag and something like this would work because uh, I don't have color by numbers um, so you could color this in all browns no I think blue would stick up more and then you can do the opposite color here in all browns and I think because of that the page would be stunning and then bring those two colors into the center part and it just really ties in the page but I don't know if you noticed but I really love the look of this coloring book Again, you've got this uh, very, like a peek into a room. You've got your cat and his friend, and then that segues into Kenya. Again, a little bit more of those gray starbursts. 
And I don't know that I've seen Kenya in any of my other coloring books. If I did, they would be in the eerie ones because she also likes to travel around the world. But you definitely have some movement here. And I think this is absolutely stunning. Again, you could do this in very cool colors, warm colors, pastel colors, vibrant colors. And because of the line art, you could really get some striking images. In fact, the way that I'm looking at this now, this one right here, I would probably do in very pale colors. But then in this one here, I would actually leave the characters as their like that is, but then adorn them all in very vibrant or very glittery ones just to play off on both of the, the sides of the page right there. I don't generally lean towards patterny kind of pages, but I think this is absolutely beautiful. And I can see, okay, all a wash of blue and then just bringing different colors to the variety of things so that there is some cohesiveness to it and yet still super vibrant. And then the final page, cat there, there's um, rhinoceros. I don't know what these other animals are, some giraffes. And then we go into South Africa by way of Cape Town. And again, some other of those gray bursts. And apparently there are penguins in South Africa. <laughs> that makes me think of Liz because I know that Liz lives in South Africa uh, from Liz at Home. Oh, and look at this. Doesn't this look like a starry night magical that there is a myth or a legend or, or something like that in there? And some of the animals are painted in, some of the animals aren't. And again, for something like this, because of the distinct black and white nature of it, I wouldn't feel the need to color everything. I might color that in sunset colors and then some of there right there. I might add some color to the balloons, but I think adding just very little color and then really playing up the black and white nature of this would absolutely look phenomenal. And then this is the last page for South Africa. It does seem uh, some of the places get more or less pages than others. That definitely was less uh, pages than some of the other ones that we saw. This is Nepal. I think that is <laughs> absolutely gorgeous. Okay, hold up. Okay, cat butt right there. <laughs> and then we've got a cat. And I just realized the cat has his friend. I don't know if the cat and the friend has been all in all of them, but I know that the black cat has been in all of them so far. And this is very stylized, so I don't know if this is very reminiscent of the artwork of Nepal. But you've got a page that could be done as a two page spread because you do have the same border around both pages and yet the images are different enough that you could do one and here are those gray starbursts again and leave the other one for another time. You could do one in all vibrant colors, one in all pastels or vice versa. This is all vibrant night colors and this is all vibrant day colors. So you've got yellows and, and oranges and reds here, but blues and and purples and greens here and I think they still would play off together because there is some symmetry and yet they are dissimilar enough that you didn't you wouldn't feel the need to color them both at the same time this here this looks to be an actual true mandala with the exception of there this is kind of yin and yang where you've got the black cat and then his white cat friend but otherwise, it does look like all of the images are the same. Well, no, they're slightly different. You've got the elements there, but you can tell that it's a hand-drawn mandala and not something done on a computer where everything is perfectly symmetrical. And so for me, this is something that I wouldn't necessarily gravitate towards first. But because there is just slight differences, it's something that I could color because I don't generally favor coloring mandalas because uh, to me, you're literally going in a circle. Uh, but I love looking at people's completed mandalas. Again, we are going into another country, Japan. We've got the cat here and the friend. And this, I think, would look great in various colors of pinks because of the sakuras right there. And then really playing up the aspect of the black and white page and again mandala-esque 
because you've got the circle feature, you've got very similar elements, but all of these shoes uh, could be colored differently. All of the handbags could be colored differently. And uh, from what I've seen from Japanese culture, you could do these in very vibrant colors to be reminiscent of like kimonos um, or very pale colors same thing i've seen kimonos in both very pale earth tones but some are very bright vibrant by way of blues and purples and reds and so i think this could look beautiful in either one of those styles this here has some I, again, because of the circle aspect, you could just tie all of these pages together just by using the same color, and yet you can make them look fundamentally different by using other colors. So you'd have one tie-in color. For me, it probably would be either a vibrant pink or a vibrant red, but then other colors to make a clear distinction between the different sections. And then you've got some very stylized Japanese writing there teapot and this looks um, like some of the um, I think it's called a wagashi which is sweets in Japanese and so this would be done in various um, I think like rice mochi type of things and then um, I love the the background there because it's very stylized but it yet with the artwork of the wagashi again you could decide to tie this in I could see this looking absolutely stand out fantastic in just gold glitter gel pen and then you bring some of the subtle colors of the wagashi in the middle and again you've got your cats here uh-oh uh-oh there is no cat on this page i have not been diligent so cats right there cat right there oh and his friend so there I don't know if I'm just not seeing it but yeah I think this is the first page we found that there is no cat huh interesting okay and then the final page for the cat I think this might be an interesting journaling page uh, I'm not sure what exactly this empty space is for I don't know that I've seen any other pages where there seems to be some deliberate uh, empty spots like that, um, but otherwise the composition of the page is quite beautiful. And then we flow into Indonesia, and I like that the cats are fishing, but in a very classy way. Frog right there. And I do love the movement on here, something like this, because there isn't a lot of black element on here, um, I think would look great in some vibrant teals and pinks and oranges. And this makes me think of James Bond. And they're very similar composition, but the use of black on these pages really makes them look different. So again, you could choose to color this as a two page spread, or you could choose to do these as single pages because I think they're dissimilar enough where you could do that, but similar enough where you could totally just mirror the colors on either side and make this look beautiful. I, I really love the look of these pages, I'm not going to lie. And something like this might seem intimidating because there are so many small details, but depending on how uh, water-based marker works on here, um, I think this could be quick work. I'm pretty sure uh, glitter gel pen would work well on here. Again, I don't know about the bleed through because I haven't colored in any of these yet. But for me, all of these beads would be the same color, and then I would do all of these beads here and either in the same color or an opposite color just to bring uh, some dimension to the page so i don't ever get fussed about details plus the use of heavily detailed but then also a lot of blank space i would not put any color in here whatsoever i wouldn't feel the need um, and then i would just concentrate on filling in some of the elements here i don't even know if i would color in the background and so that way the it, you really get the shape of that right there and then adding some color in here. I think that would look phenomenal. And then we're going into Bali, and this is quite the page, and there is so much going on, and yet I think it's so visually stunning because 
to me, it's not so much it's entangly as it's creating movement by way of this little vignette here and this little vignette here and this up here. You've got the winking moon right there. We've got the two cats. We've got the two cats. I have not been diligent in looking for them. Two there. And that must be because this is a two page spread. I guess that's why this counts for that. Maybe that's how the teapot one worked as well. And there's just so many different elements on here that your eye just kind of goes around the page, but all of it makes sense. Again, it's not like the obnoxious, um, just random pictures in the mythographic books. All of this, it seems to be designed specifically to incorporate into the page. And so that just had the two page spread in this. And I love these girls right here. They look absolutely stunning. And again, you kind of have a mandala feel, but the images are not the same. So there are definitely elements of the similar type on the page, but they are not exact duplicates. And that's gorgeous. And I do, I do love the cats on the page. Oh, look at these guys. Australia and <laughs> a little Santa. Oh, this makes me think of the picture book that my friend Sarah had sent to me. Uh, where um, Christmas time is hot there because they are in the Southern Hemisphere. And so this actually looks like Christmas here in Hawaii. So Santa's on a surfboard with some of his uh, aquatic friends and this would be done all in blues and taupes and browns because I mean, if you live in a tropical area or if you live in the Southern Hemisphere, your Christmas is probably not going to be all snow and greens and reds. And that's the uh, Opera House in Sydney. Oh, that's a beautiful page. And so we've got more of the Tropical Santa and there's lots of Santas. Wow, is that where Santas go for the holidays? Makes sense, I get it. Lots of birds, okay, okay. Uh, cat duty, so we've got cat duty there and we've got cat here. And where's the friend? Oh, and the cat right there. And these I would leave in black and white. I would not color in this uh, white cat at all on any of the pages. Oh, see now this, this is an interesting bird. So I think this is like a cockatoo and a thingamajing. This one looks like he's saluting. <laughs> I don't know what that, I mean, it kind of looks like a platypus, but I don't think a platypus is a bird, but that beak right there. It's interesting. And then you've got some um, Aborigine artwork on here, when I think is absolutely stunning. Again, this one I can see with just one color and very strategic around the page. For this one, I'd probably want to look at what colors the Aborigines use in some of their artwork and then sort of mimic on here, but be very strategic so that these wouldn't all be colored in fully. No, I would just add some strategic colors and just really um, lean into the black and white aspect. And then you've got your cats. And then this one's off the page because this one has a lot of black in it. And then there's the white cat thing right there. And we've got Heart Reef and the Great Barrier Reef, again, still in Australia. And then we go into Polynesia. Now, I live in Hawaii, but I'm half Samoan. So I loved seeing this just because there is a little bit of representation. In some of the eerie coloring books, there are some Polynesian type um, pictures, but they seem to lend towards more Micronesia by way of the Marshall Islands and Palau. And so just seeing um, Polynesian uh countries represented by way of Tahiti and Tonga and Easter Island and New Zealand, it just made me really happy. And so you've got New Zealand here, you've got your two cats. And so I guess because this is a two page spread and this one you'd have to color in a two page spread only because the words encompassed <laughs> two different pages. But again, I don't know if I would go full on vibrant with this, if I would color every single element, or if I would jerry pick some of the items on the page. And I don't know what aliens have to do with New Zealand, but that's, that's an interesting element there, as well as the planets here. Yeah, I don't know what that has to do with New Zealand, but it's interesting. And then you've got Tahiti here. 
and it looks like there's a two-page spread. This again, I would do in very bright tropical uh, colors. This one, I'd probably look at some tapa cloth from Tahiti uh, because uh, they can be very brown in nature or they can be very vibrant, just depending on the artist's rendition. And I think that would be interesting. We've got the black cat here. Oh, and we've got the white cat there. They're having some martinis here. Or definitely some kind of tropical drink. And again, there's some of that white space. I don't know what that would be for. But it, it is interesting. So it looks like not all of the Polynesian have their own dedicated pages. So there isn't a page for all of these on here, but you do at least get some representation because once we pass this, and again, there's nothing specifically that says um, Hawaii, Samoa, whatever. So this is just another page from Polynesia because then we go into Chile. And so we've got, oh, the white cat is dancing the hula. Uh, or no, uh, because they have those things. This is probably more Tahitian. And then you've got the cat with the, well, based on the scale, this looks like a guitar, but I think ukuleles are more indigenous to Hawaii or Polynesia than an actual guitar is, but I could be wrong. And then we go into Chile. And again, you, you definitely have some interesting movement in here. There's the black and there's the white cat. And I don't know if you can tell from this coloring book, but there definitely is, like I mentioned, some Rita Berman vibes by way of how the composition flows. Angela Porter vibes by way of it's really reminding me of, of the two Entangled books that I have. Um, but also some eerie vibes by way of the line work, which I think is just stunning. And so you've got your cat friends right here. And I don't see them in this page. It's interesting how the, you look at the imagery and the imagery is absolutely beautiful, but then you're like, okay, so where are the cats? Yeah, I don't see them. And then Argentine, Buenos Aires, Cordoba. And I do like how they brought this in to denote where this is. And then you've got some images here. You could color all of them in very similar colors. You can make them all different. And I just, I think it's beautiful. Again, another one of those mandala type pages that isn't a mandala because there is no symmetry. The way of the elements, you do have similar things on either side, but even those things are not the same thing. The only similarity Nope, because these change. They've got some of the same flowers, but they're in different positions. Santelmo. I actually, I don't know if that's a place in Argentina, Argentine. That's the sign up there. And you've got the dogs and the cats dancing. And I believe the tango is oh, the dance of Argentina, Argentine. And Brazil. And where are our cats? I guess this is a two page spread because the cats are right here, but I don't see them on this page. Or them e progresso. And I don't know if this is just Brazil. I think Brazil does take quite a bit of South America. But this is the Amazon and this is Brazil with some uh, various cities and towns there. Brigadero, I think, is some of their sweets. I'm not sure. I'm relying all on the Food Channel <laughs> for my information. Rio de Janeiro, and they do a huge carnival once a year, I believe. 
and just oh and there's the the jesus statue that's on the hill that they're famous for and i like how that's incorporated into the page and so these um probably represent different landmarks there and this to me i think would be stunning and absolute vibrant uh jewel tones a glitter gel pen or metallic watercolors just because it is for a carnival And you've got cats on both pages, so it's not necessarily a two-page spread. Although they don't feed into each other by way of the imagery, and yet I think having similar colors in both the pages would absolutely look stunning. <laughs> and Sao Paulo, and that is a town in Brazil. And then the epilogue. So we've got our two friends here, and we've got our two friends here. And then that's it. That's the very last page of this book. I looked through these before, but talking through the pages with you guys, it it's it's a really stunning coloring book. I'm glad I have them. I can't wait to work in them. I've been dealing with some back issues. I'm definitely feeling a lot better, but I can feel as soon as I start coloring a little bit that my arm and my shoulder still are, are a bit tense. And so I'm just going to be very judicious on what I color. And so I will get to this uh, one of these, um, hopefully this month, but it's definitely something that I'm very happy that I picked up. So this is Music Rendezvous, and this is a coloring book by Funo Yanagawa. I would love to know your thoughts on this coloring book in the comment section below. All right, guys, well, that's it for me for now, and as always, aloha!